We are about to get into the things, honey. Hello, hello, Aaron. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I was trying to search for Steve. Is Steve joining us on this? He is, yeah. Ah, from Tamworth's page. Got it. I see it. One second. Except, yes. There oh, we wow. go. <laughs> I should have put mine on. I just got it today. <laughs> I love it so much. It's so great. Okay, I got it today, y'all. You don't have your props. Oh, I can't man. see that I posted it. I don't have your props. I haven't sent them yet. I'm the only one who doesn't. Yes, have I had to. Yet. You know, I had to display the box. I always try to keep all the brands and stuff featured while we do our lives. I think yeah. the packaging is so great. Oh, thank you. The wig is great great too. I'm like, huh. uh, I was, um, I was doing a photo shoot before this. That's why I have a glass. But it's like, I was like, damn, it's good. It's pretty damn smooth. It's the. Uh, conical energy of the dunce caps rested over the barrels that has made it so smooth. I cannot wait to get into the conversation about the dunce caps over the barrel. I just watched the YouTube video not too long ago <laughs> talking about this whole process, so I'm definitely excited to get into that. Thank you, everyone, who is tuning in right now. Yes. We are here with Erin Goldfarb. And Steve, to me, I pronounce your last name. Grass. Grass, OK. Yeah. I was making it fancier in my head than it needed to be. Steve Grass and Aaron Goldfarb. Aaron Goldfarb, we already know, is a fabulous writer. Um, and Steve, you are the owner of Tamworth? Owner of Tamworth and the owner of Quaker City Mercantile. Okay. Yes. Okay. And Tamworth is stealing for those who shop at Sealbox already. We already know how they have the most outlandish uh, lineup of spirits that we've probably come across. Absolutely. And, you know, we met Sealbox through Aaron. Aaron's the one really? who connected us with you. Oh, I didn't know that Aaron yeah. made that connection. Cool. Yeah. I think, I, think yeah. I forgot about that. I got to start yeah. asking for finders fees here. Yes, you <laughs> should. Yes, you should. Now, Tamworth makes some really fun stuff. I actually kind of want to start there with Tamworth and how y'all even came to be. I, I was, in listening to the video, it was you guys were emphasizing how it, the company kind of started with this like esoteric and very eth ethereal um kind of methodology and, and stuff behind it and I'm really I'm really into that and like what made you even apply any of that to distilling spirits even though I feel like distill distillation started as in a very spiritual place to no it did and I think part of that it's, it's that's the root of it it's at the, at the heart of it I'm very much into history and and stories and 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 all those things and and the uh you know, the idea of how spirits started with, uh, you know, the alchemists and, mm -hmm. and uh, well, you know, favorite. they're called spirits because the, uh, you know, you're transmuting the, um, the energy or the spirit of the, of the plant into another form and all those things. So Tamworth is really, um, I don't know, I've been in this business for 34 years and it's the culmination of, you know, it's kind of like Alexander the Great after conquering so many worlds. Like, what else is there left to do? Well, let's get weird. Let's let's do some really interesting stuff. And it's sort of this utopian distilling community in the uh, Shangri-La of the White Mountains of New Hampshire. So um, it's the sole purpose is to entertain me. Um, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, because we've done it all. That. We've done everything else. So there you go. Yeah, you. I mm. mean. The turkey whiskey, yeah. The venison whiskey. That deer slayer is still, I think, one of our um, one of our biggest performers when it comes to y'all's lineup. So yeah. Well, we also make really good, like um, you know, really good, you know, straight stuff. Like we make an amazing uh, VSOP brandy. Yes. We make, uh, my, on my own bar, I love it. I Long believe our gin. I believe our old man of the mountain bourbon is is. That's it, the Baldwin Bond. Yep, really good stuff. And then our gin program, I think, is one of the most um, interesting and, uh, again, experimental um, gin programs probably in the country. So, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I love your floral, Jen. Yeah, thank you. Really thank you. Delicious. Yeah. And I like your liqueurs. Yeah, and our and our art in the age liqueurs are, are very um again, very experimental. Um we're you know, I, I think the uh the T T B probably has a a poster of us hanging up of like most annoying distillery in the world because we're constantly challenging them with can we do this and lobbying them to do things that they've yeah. never done before and i feel like well that's your fault for having such a restrictive list like why are why is spirits the only the only industry that's not allowed to do anything so we we keep pushing them and challenging them to go to go further yeah i love that so yeah. with that being the case okay so doing the infusions like the vincent and crab trapper which is another like huge performer people were loving that one like did you have to go to ttv first with like asking if that's even allowed or was that that wasn't an issue for them what we always do is we come up with the idea and before we go too far with it like we we, we have a good sense that it's going to work we start lobbying the TTB at the same time. And I think the trick that we found to doing it is putting it into historic or ethnic context. So if you can prove an ingredient is either uh, been historically used or used by an ethnic group, uh, they kind of have to let you do it. Um, so, which is very interesting to me. Like the castorium is, uh, uh, which is the beaver gland is, um, I think a traditional, uh, traditionally used. It's, it's interesting because it's widely used as a as a flavoring in uh, in a lot of other categories. But in the spirits world, we had to prove that I think the Swedes and even Native Americans used it as a uh, as a flavoring. So then then you kind of prove that precedent. There's precedent, and then then they tend to let you uh, go through. But it takes a while. You can't just spontaneously do spirits. You have to plan. You have to plan sometimes years in advance. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay, well, Aaron, so now that I know you were the one that made this whole connection in the first place, how did you even um, establish that relationship with Tamworth and, and what brought us to this bad book that is going to be, that is already up for sale, y'all, with the Dunce Whiskey, but this brand mysticism book. So how did the connection happen? How did you all even start creating together and, and starting these type of cool projects? Yeah, he, um, you know, I think it was back in 2017, I, I noticed there was this madman, ad man in Philadelphia who was making lots of, uh, you know, everything he touched went viral. I think that was right around the, um, the, uh, the Uda Musk, the, the, the beaver mm -hmm. uh, gland one. And I thought like, what's the, what's the secret? What's the magic? So I, I interviewed him and, and wrote an article for Vinepair called, How Do You Make a Booze Brand Go Viral? I think we had a hour or two hour long conversation and you know, I, I was I was laughing the whole time. I thought it was really hilarious. Um, I remember I was down in, in Kentucky when I wrote that article and, and Joe who owns Mictors came up to me and he said, Hey, you're that guy who wrote that um that hilarious article about how do you make a booze band go viral? Yeah. So, you know, everyone down in Louisville was talking about it at the time, you know, big players in the industry. So, you know, I knew something was up. Um you know, we stayed in touch. And then I think in February, right before the pandemic, Steve uh, called me down to Philadelphia. I took the train down and, you know, he said, I want to write a book. And then he told me his methodology and I didn't understand a damn thing he said, but I thought he must be onto something. So I'll figure it out as I write the book. And, uh, you know, most of, I think, uh, you know, 2020 and then 2021, we talked on the phone every Monday, I think, and uh, put this book together. So yeah, luckily there was a pandemic, so we could uh, have all this time yeah. in isolation oh, to, uh, to work on a book. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, I've only been in a room with Steve once, I think, for an hour yeah. in my entire yeah. life. The rest of it was Zoom calls. Yep. Zoom, yeah. So are there recipes in here? No. No. <laughs> There's recipes, recipes, recipes for here. success. <laughs> recipes for success. <laughs> no, it's about... It's about um, you know, and, and I think the book is I love the artwork. essential. Yeah, the artwork is by the, the guy who, uh, uh, the art director and designer who created Hendrix with me, Hendrix and Sailor Jerry. It's very much in that vein yeah. of their... He, uh, I invited him to uh, 
to uh, design the book because I wanted it to, uh, you know, he's been working with me for 32 years. So, um, and he also designed dance. I love the, I love the label. Yeah, thank you. It's so simple. It's like, I like it. I like simple, but in like to the point. Yeah, it's good. pretty. And like, it's a, it's a good collector's bottle. Like even when I finish that, yeah. I'll probably keep the bottle. So I love that. Uh, so I was going to say, you know, I think the book's an essential guide. If you're, if you're in the, uh, if you're a craft brewer, craft distiller, uh, craft winery, or anyone in the industry, um, it's a it's a guide on how to how to make your brand that you currently have better, or how to create new brands. So I mean, what is there something like six? Isn't there ten thousand craft breweries, uh, <laughs> over two thousand distilleries? Like, it's a sea of products. Everyone's stuff looks the same. Everyone's stuff variations on the same flavor. So it's really a, a guide on how to break out and be different. And if you're not in the business, it's just a, a guide on how to live a more creative life. And, and um, you know, creativity is spirituality in, in my book, at least. And that's, uh, we talk about how to how to live a more creative life. I love that. Well, I'll be traveling tomorrow, so this will be on the plane. Yes. I cannot wait to read. It's a good read <laughs> while, while you're sitting on the toilet as well. It's a quick pace <laughs> read. And, um, Anyway, there you go. It's a, it's a loop book. So can we talk about the use of the word dunce and its original meaning versus the connotation that it was given? Because I actually, from watching you all's video, it was how I learned the original meaning of the word dunce. Yeah. So I'll let Aaron discuss how we decided to create a brand based on the book first. And then I'll go into who John Dunn's was and, and how we did this. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, like most writers, I'm always trying to get an angle that'll help me become more famous and sell more books. So I said to myself, hey, I got a book coming out at the end of the year with a literal guy who can produce alcohol whenever he wants. And I said, Steve, you know, we should produce the first ever spirit that comes out with a book. You know, and I think a normal guy would have you know, just bottled a gin that he'd already produced and slapped on you know, a, label. a label with a picture yeah. of the cover or whatever and, you know, sent it to a hundred influencers. I would have been fine with that, quite frankly. But, you know, Steve is incapable of doing something that simple and that's why he creates these great brands. And so he literally used brand mysticism to create dunce on pay, let's see. Mm. There's a chapter called, uh, so you refuse to listen to me and want to create yet another source bourbon brand. It's about- um, What page is that on? <laughs> that's uh, 105. 105, okay. So, so graphic, it goes with. Yeah, so, you know, lots of people think they can just buy a few barrels of MGP, come to Steve, ask him to come up with a cool name or a cool label. And pretty soon they'll be selling, you know, their brand to, you know, Grupo Campari for $600 million. Yeah. Uh, so that chapter is about how that's not going to happen. Um, having said that, Steve took the funny image from- I was gonna uh, say, the photo short. <laughs> and, you know, I'll let Steve explain where, where he goes from here to create the brand. Okay, so we have an idea that we're gonna troll the liquor industry by doing a sourced whiskey brand which is exactly what we tell you not to do in the book. So we're gonna like, well, so we're gonna do that. But again, using brand mysticism, <laughs> we're going to create an actual brand that has depth and meaning and layers and intrigue. And so I got to thinking like, well, where, where did Dunce Cap, why, why what's, 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 how did a Dunce Cap even start, okay? So of course you do a little research and you find out that of course, there was a man named John Duns Scotus who lived, I think, uh, in the 1200s, late 1200s, who was literally the smartest man alive, okay? And he was so smart because he wore a pointy cap that channeled the heavens, uh, the energy of the universe of the heavens into your brain, okay? He wasn't the one who came up with this. Well, who did? The Egyptians, pyramid power, right? Mm -hmm. So pyramid power is a real thing. I actually b firmly believe in, the, in my own, this isn't bullshit, I actually really believe it. So we thought, 
so he, he wore this Dun, Dunn's cap. It was called D-U-N-S, Dunn's cap. And he had, um, he had followers called Dunsman. And he was the smartest man in the world. And this made the Pope jealous and angry. So what did the Pope do? Pope murdered him, buried him alive. This is all true. Wow. And then the Pope set out on a, on a uh, you know, centuries-long disinformation campaign, fake news, mm -hmm. where he turned the dunce cap, which was a symbol of intelligence, into a symbol of stupidity. And, um, and, and we were reading that, and I was like, you know, that'd be a really interesting, you know, name for a brand. Because we were, first we were kind of making fun of, like, all the brands that have fake stories, right? So... I don't want to be rude and mention them, but some of them mentioned that, like, say, say they were like Al Capone's secret rest, all this, all this bullshit, right? So it's bullshit. And some, oh, some of them have even gotten sued or in trouble, for it, right? So at first it started out as a joke. It's called Dunce. But then I started really researching this dude and like all the brands we have, I'm like, oh, there's something to this. So um, we, we created these giant Dunce caps, comical caps that fit over the barrels, over the whiskey barrels. And we, uh, we took, you know, the selected barrels for this project and we placed the giant conical caps over them for a period of, I think it was four months. Okay. And we waited to see if the energy from the universe would transform the, um, would transform the whiskey into something that was more, uh, you know, even better than it already was. And you have to keep in mind that Tamworth, where we build our distillery, is, is located on uh, ley lines. Ley lines are these myth, myth, mystical or mythical lines, energy lines, um, that were laid out in ancient times where um, it, it's, uh, I think, uh, uh, where in New Mexico? No, Arizona. Um, what's the fancy place in Arizona? I know what where, you're saying. Where Maynard makes his whiskey, I uh, know his, his wine. Anyway, there's certain places, New Zealand's a place, there's certain places in the world where energy um, channels itself. And Tamworth is one of those weird places. And, um, and so we, we, I think it enhanced the, the uh, energy level of the brand, okay? So the point is, we started out trolling and creating a silly brand that we thought was really funny. And we ended up creating something that is, is quite magical, I believe. So you have to buy a bottle and then decide whether the whiskey has been transformed on a, on a mystical or mythical level. I believe you'll, you'll agree that it has. But it comes with a dunce cap and, all the, and, and the poster that you have in the background there. Mm -hmm. you, get all the, you get all the good stuff. You get all the good stuff. Yeah, all the good stuff. And all your friends will think you're intelligent. Now, we're also, when we do our tastings, we wear dunce caps. Everyone, we, when, we, when we sell the product into bars and restaurants, all the servers wear dunce caps. So we're hoping the dunce cap becomes a trend. Well, I'm going to wear mine when I, do my, when I post my tasting notes on this. All right, very good. I'm going to wear my hat. Because it'll enhance the flavor. It enhances the flavor. I'm going to take your word for there you it. Go. There you and go. And I'm going to actually try it because I believe in all the things. Yes. I believe yes. in the universe. I believe in energy and, and all of that being able to transfer. It's all in the book. Oh, yeah. I'm reading this this week. So it's creating a smarter drinker, those. right? Yeah. What would you say, Aaron? It's creating a smarter drinker. Smarter drinker. It. Drink less, drink better, drink smarter. Yes. I like that. Yeah. This statement has not been approved by the <laughs> FDA. <laughs> hey, guys, if you all have any questions um, it's that you want to add to the comments, please feel free while we're having the conversation. Um, I forgot to start with that. That's usually my first disclaimer. But yeah. Sorry, I have a cat. My own disclaimer, I have a psycho cat that is determined not to leave me alone. So if I get distracted, it's him. Um, and he's also very intrigued by this box. Yes. The dunce is pulling it's him. It's the energy. Yeah. I'm telling the you. It's pulling him in. It's the energy. I just don't. So. Look at that. Look at that. That's, oh a, that's not an endorsement. I don't know what it is. This I think, cat is insane. I think he's, I think he's going to poop the in the box. box. Oh, I think no, it's no. litter. I think she's going to oh, no. kitty litter in the box. box. I hope you don't think that. Oh, I didn't think <laughs> that aspect. I'm so glad y'all said that. <laughs> I was going to let him play around for a minute. 
for a minute, but no, that is not what we need. <laughs> Publicized. <laughs> uh, that is not brand friendly. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> this was so fab. So, Aaron, let's get into more of you a little bit in terms of how you, like, why spirits? Did you start out, well, you started out in writing in general because writing is your primary career. Did you start out focusing in on spirits or did you just kind of happen to be interested in it and it worked in your favor that way? I mean, I think, you know, kind of like Steve, I, I, I fell, you know, into it. Um, when I was in college, writing about spirits was not something the counselors told you could be a real job. And, you know, I think by the time I graduated college, there might've been two people on planet earth writing about drinking for a living. Um, no, I, I did lots of things. I wrote screenplays. I wrote a few novels, oh. you know, you know, those are not exactly lucrative unless you put wizards in them. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I, I, you know, I, I was always tantalized by the spirits industry, craft beer, stuff like that, cocktails. It was something I enjoyed doing. You know, I, I was lucky to live in my 20s and 30s in, in New York City as all these industries were undergoing a real title change. You know, Hendrix Gin comes out in 1999. I remember when it came out, I was 20 years old. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was the, <laughs> the first gin to hit shelves that didn't look like it was something grandma drank. Yeah. You know, I, w I wouldn't know Steve for another 20 years, but I, I really remember when it came out, I thought, wow. Um, and the same thing was happening in, in bourbon and cocktails, craft beer. So it was a very exciting industry. Um, I, I wasn't just in in it for the excitement in my 20s. I was also in it to uh, get drunk and meet girls, but uh, that's another thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, I, I learned a lot about these industries and, and in the late aughts, uh, places started asking me to write about it. Esquire was one of the first places I started writing about spirits um, and it was fun. I got paid to write about things that I was already a hobbyist with that I already enjoyed following and pursuing and, and slowly but surely it kind of became mostly my, my full-time career. I mostly only write about, you know, spirits and cocktails and drinking culture these days. And it's a, it's a good, good place to be at this time. Yeah. It's really cool. Hmm. I love that. And how did you and Blake connect? How did me and Blake connect? Um, well, when you're a writer who's writing several stories a week, you constantly need a guy to give you quotes for your story so that you know that, so that it's a factual story and not your opinion and blake was always willing to give me quotes i needed for my story to source give me sources and tell me here's something stupid going on in california you should look into <laughs> here's this guy in texas that's worth writing about and you know we we became friends we've done a few barrel picks together he was very generous with one of my most recent books hacking whiskey which came out in I think 2018. Also we, on my bookshelf. Great. Yeah, we did. Uh, we did a few hacked whiskey finishes together. A ice wine. The finish ice rye. wine. One. Yeah. That was the most significant one that I remember. Was the ice wine finish rye. Yeah. So he's always kind of been on the same ethos as me. With uh, you know why why do something boring when you can do something interesting? So that's how we've connected, and you know I'm glad to get Tamworth on there and, and sell stuff. Yeah. Yeah, great. Which brings me back to you, Steve. How do you decide the the types of flavors that you want to get weird with? Like, like especially like for instance, like the Eau de Musk. Like, who thinks about a beaver at all? <laughs> for starters, well, and I then... think it's interesting. Um, there, there, the development goes along two paths. It either comes from a story historic idea that I might, I might have. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, that's Deerslayer came from me being obsessed with James Fenimore Cooper, right? And I just read um, uh, that book. And, and I asked my team, could we do anything with venison? Um, and then that starts a whole process. The first answer is always no. But then it starts a process of, well, we could try this or do that. The Oda Musk was interesting because uh, New Hampshire has a real beaver problem. Ooh. And there's one guy who's the beaver guy. And uh, I forget how we met him, but he, he, uh, 
he came to us with um, with a lot of beavers, <laughs> and we just uh, decided to uh, to play with that. Our we have a we're, we're interesting as a smaller distillery because we have a full time biochemist on staff as well as a master distiller, mm -hmm. and so we um, we approach things in a very different way than um, I think a lot of a small craft distilleries do. We approach things um, from the get go. I think we also have a lot more lab equipment than. Um, that a lot of distilleries our, our size do. Um, yeah, so I think we approach it from a very, you know, experimental stance from the beginning. So we build it as a test kitchen and, um, and, and really to experiment with what we can do. And what, it's interesting because our main business is Quaker City Mercantile and we, you know, create brands like Hendrix and Sailor Jerry. We work with big companies like Diageo, like we run, uh, Guinness in the U.S. and we do their innovation. Um, so we work with, you know, and, and the work we've done at Tamworth has directly um, been relevant to my big uh, consulting gigs because we know, I, I think at this point, I know more about the industry than any of my clients do. I know more about it from a uh, design perspective, but then also from a liquid perspective because we're actually in the trenches trying new things, working on new ideas all the time. So, yeah. This is so good. It is good. Is it? A lot more chocolate on the palate than I anticipated, actually. Yeah. I'm we trying. also, Aaron, you're, fun. Right? you're missing out. I'm yes, out. Aaron, yeah, where did your pour? They haven't sent it to me yet. I'm just the writer. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm going to rip somebody's. He'll say, how did I manage to get a bottle before you? <laughs> I know, I'm going to rip somebody's head off. Why doesn't Aaron have a bottle of, of dunce? Jesus. All right, we're, we're taking care of that. The nose yeah. is super herbaceous, like really bright, a lot of citrus. I get a little bit of red fruit in there. I'm going to say like medley of red fruit just because I'm not getting any one in particular, but it's definitely fruit. And it's really light for a four-year. It tastes even better. I'm telling you, if you put the cap on, it trans it's transformative. Yeah, let me see. Is this cap easy to put together? Yeah, I think. Oh, it is. I just take off the strip and stick it. There you go. This could replace the Burger King crown as the the top. Well, yeah, paper, but that, that paper crown, crown. Burger King crown. Didn't I was never much of a Burger King crown person. Burger King Crown didn't make it taste better. This this makes the whiskey taste better. <laughs> it thing. definitely did not improve the burgers. I would tell you that. Okay, I see. I see. Let me stick it on. I think I, I want to make the dunce cap big in Japan. That's my goal. To make want, it big in Japan. Yeah, because I want I want to convince Japanese whiskey snobs that the dunce cap is the next big thing. Because that's that's my dream, is to go to Tokyo and see everyone wearing a dunce cap. I see everyone wearing a dunce cap. Yeah. Just so that you can say you convinced the whiskey snobs. Yes. That's hilarious. I, I like your bucket list, Steve. Okay, I think I got it. Here we go. There you go. Now try the whiskey. The whiskey. <laughs> okay, now let's see if it tastes better. It was already good, so I don't know if I'm going to have a great place of comparison here. Well, it's still damn good. <laughs> I get <laughs> amazing. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. I get a little vanilla, actually, a little vanilla bean. See? Texture wise, it dries out really nicely, but not to the point of being tannic. It's still got acidity. This is really nice. It gets a little like, almost a texture of like honeycomb on the finish. Her tasting notes are so good, I can taste it even though no one will send me a bottle. I try to keep, I try to be as detailed as I can. I try. <laughs> mm. It's really good, y'all. And then, this is like a mostly corn mash, right? Yep, 75% corn, 21% rye, 4% malted barley. So we are calling this a bourbon, correct? We're not calling it like just an American whiskey. Because I noticed y'all didn't actually list like bourbon on the label. I'm wondering if that's intentional. 
Uh, <laughs> I don't think it is intentional. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's so fun. Like it meets the age requirement. It meets the mash requirement. I don't know about the, the I think the, um, the, the point is, too, that um, like each series of dunce is going to be different. Okay. It's, it's well, going, I love that. Yeah, because it's always going to be like whatever the best is that we can get. Mm -hmm. Whatever is going to react mostly to the uh, to the conical enhancement, you know, different grains are different. Yeah, that's how we're going to choose our barrels. And you all are blending or um, doing like just picking from a single barrel? Single barrel. We're picking from single barrels. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So this is all. All this juice is from one barrel. All from one barrel. Fine. Oh, I love but that. Con conically enhanced. <laughs> so okay. So explain the conically enhanced part to me. Y'all are making a large dunce cap, essentially. Yes. And placing it over our are the barrels standing up? Are they laying on their sides like most barrels? Um, well, we do a mixed thing. So they, okay. they, they spend time. Um, sometimes they're on their side and sometimes they're standing up. It depends on, um, like, we rotate them. Okay. Because we want to make sure it's, like, getting the full conical spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we take the barrels outside for a walk. Really? Yes, because we have this beautiful distillery by the river. So sometimes you go to Tamworth, you can see that barrels are by the river with giant cones on them on a beautiful day next to the bro It's called the Swift River, but it's like this beautiful babbling energy. Right? Wow. And you'll take them for a walk. The, the, uh, the barrels are... Barrel yeah. That has barrels on it? The barrels have a very nice... Um, a very nice existence, very tranquil. We believe that the tranquility enhances the energy levels. So, what, a, what, a, what about a conically built barrel? Would that work? That I would think that's a genius. I, I, you know what, Aaron? That's, that's amazing. We need to, we need to build it. Yeah. This, is it. this is very innovative. I feel like I'm a part of history right now. I love that. We need to find a Cooper. I would imagine it'd be It'd be hard to store them. I yeah, the cones would have one this way, one this way. You know what I mean? Like one this way, one this. You know what I mean? They could be yeah. stacked. Yeah. Um, I wonder if it could be something that could be like it doesn't have to stay on it. Like when you're ready to age with it, you put the con the conical kind of like well, cap yeah. for like a better word. Like we've put it is, on. We've, ba we've placed the the caps on the barrels as a way of finishing them, mm -hmm. right? But I think you could do it from the moment they're, they're put in the cask. And I think that, yeah, that would be a very interesting next level. Dunce, Dunce 2.0. Yeah. Dunce 2 I like I that. Like it. Dunce I like gold. It. Dunce gold. Yeah, and so it's like... aged for four years in new oak, yeah. but then finished in used oak or? No, they're finished. Um, we don't, we don't finish, we, we, the finishing is the caps being placed. It's adding the caps. So you're not taking it out of the barrel yeah. and putting it in something else. You're just adding the cap. Yeah. Okay. Time and then y'all do that time. part for four months? If we do it for four months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Really cool. I like that. Sometimes, you know, on a beautiful stuff. moonlit night, if you, um, it's about, you know, we, we hook the barrels it's like it's almost like when you go. Sometimes you see like um, small children on a nursery school, and they're they're all walking with their teacher, mm -hmm. holding hands. Like we do that with the barrels. They sort of go for a walk <laughs> with the caps on them, and they're placed by the river. And sometimes we even have um, there are some. Uh, there's a um, a gentleman in New Hampshire named Yorgos Maxhammer who's in the video. And he is a, um, he identifies as a Wiccan. Um, but, but he's helping our spirit, spiritual um, guide. So for instance, like playing soothing music, I know like, like Metallica plays Metallica to their, whatever their brand is, but that's really bad for the whiskey. What you want it to do is you want to calm it and you want to make it really beautiful. So this is the opposite of that. Um, it's the dunce method. It's, um, it's uh, it's it's a beautiful thing. I like it. Yeah, well, I love the whiskey. So, 
Yeah. I definitely think we're going to have a lot of uh, pleased people yeah. when they get their hands on this. And guys, it's already available for pre-sale. Already um, available, yes. The actual time when it will be available for shipping is, a, is on the product page already. And if, so. and if you order now, you get the box. Yes, you get the box. You get the big ass box. The box is beautiful. If, uh, if you want to see the insides of it, I posted it on my story, so feel free to look at it. The collector's edition dunce. You're, you'll be the first dunce in your neighborhood. That's a good way to market it. <laughs> I like that. I'm telling you, it looks great on you. Thank you. I'm going to take me a couple pictures along with my <laughs> set and get my tasting notes. I like it. <laughs> I'm not a big hat girl. Who knew? Yeah. Um, shape things don't look bad yeah. okay all right well guys i'm not gonna hold you up all afternoon i appreciate y'all hopping on with me i'm really excited uh for the official release of this this is beautiful presentation i really love all of the all of the branding behind it it's gorgeous great well thank and you it's always even better it's a sealed deal when the juice is actually good too because i hate a well-packaged bad juice so I love that you're giving me best of both worlds here. I love the whole ethereal approach to how you, you go about producing spirits. I think that's really, really cool. Um, and I don't I haven't heard of anybody else taking that approach to it. And it's actually part of what attracts me to spirits. Alchemist is one of my favorite books. So I'm very much into all that. So I love that. Great. Right. Well, thank I love you. that a lot. Thank you so much. So, thank you guys for joining us. Aaron, I know we'll be talking again soon. And yeah, well, Steve, I, I hope we'll be talking again soon too. Because yeah. I like you. Absolutely. We got some more. <laughs> Weird stuff coming along the way. So we'll yes, go. I got I got to come to Tamworth and like try some stuff with y'all. Come to Tamworth. I'm definitely down to make a trip. So I'll put that one on Blake's calendar along with everything else. All right, <laughs> very good. Thank you. All okay. right, y'all. I have a great rest of your afternoon. Bye -bye. And thank you all for joining us in the audience. Bye, guys. Bye.